Hey folks, how you guys doing? Hope you are all having a great day today. This is the final video in the new shop series covering the climate control here in the shop. So the shop has been completely set up for about two weeks now. I have been rocking and rolling with some other stuff. I made this assembly table, recorded it, haven't even started editing it because I want to get this video published and the whole shop series completed. I got a couple shop projects done that I, I really didn't even record because they're just generic and well, generic. <laughs> and I've also been training somebody local, a friend of mine local on the CNC machine uh, on the weekends just because he finds it really fascinating and wants to potentially get into that business of making stuff with the CNC machine. And I find it fascinating being able to share my enjoyment for woodworking as well as the technology behind CNC type stuff. So basically I have been busy in here for about two weeks and I absolutely love 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 this space it turned out way way more than i had my expectations for this space have been exceeded as far as the outcome it is such an inviting encouraging uh, motivating clean space to be in with a lot of elbow room and it's just really nice um, so this video is going to cover one of the biggest factors in making this space really nice and that is the climate control. This is by far the biggest expense with moving to this new space. Every bit of it was out of pocket so nothing in this video is provided or sponsored any of that stuff. Um, so yeah let's just jump into it. There's three main factors that control the climate here in this space. Number one uh, the mini split system that I had installed, so actually manipulating the climate with heat, and hot and cold air. Uh, number two, the spray foam that I had installed in the roof, and that uh, keeps at bay the sun, which is the biggest defender as far as heat coming into the structure. And then number three, the garage doors. Those are the second biggest defender as far as heat coming in. Now. I'll get into the garage doors in just a second, but they aren't installed. I have them ordered and the insulated doors will be here next week, but I wanted to get this video done. So first up, the mini split system. I've got a little list to go off of, so sorry if that's distracting. The mini, the mini split system that I went with after a tremendous, tremendous amount of research and talking to three or four um, HVAC contractors throughout the country that uh, have interacted with on social media, having discussions with them. Basically, I did my research and the system that I went with is a Mitsubishi mini split system for here in the shop. Uh, I'm going to be here a long time and I want this space to be as comfortable as possible for as many days out of the year as possible. Um, when we moved here, this was all kind of like a um, a spur of the moment move. We, we weren't really actively looking for a new, ho new home, but this one popped up with the shop and it was just, it just met so much of our criteria. So we moved and then after moving, not only does it meet so much of our criteria for the business, we happened to move into one of the best schooling neighborhoods or school districts um, around here. So my daughter is 11 months old and I hope that she graduates from this place, uh, from the school district. 18 years from now, six, 17 years from now, something like that. So I'm going to be here a while. Uh, so I did put big emphasis on the heating and cooling. It's a Mitsubishi mini split system. It is a three zone unit. So outside is one single unit. Inside is three uh, mini split heads or zones, wall mounted heads. And you can see right there is one of them. So if you're looking at the back wall, this is the left one and the right one is placed symmetrically on <laughs> the other side of the, that same wall. The third, mini, the, the third zone is upstairs in the loft. And I did move my office upstairs in the loft after the spray foam and with the spray foam and these mini splits going, it is, it's perfect in here as far as the climate control, as far as I'm concerned. Um, so the, the, the system itself is a 36, thousand BTU uh, system and I just used some online sizing calculators to figure out what I thought I needed and then I talked to a local con uh, local HVAC contractor with a good reputation to come he came out did some measurements and went back and did some calculations and basically told me that this is the system that matches my space which is the basically the exact same size as I calculated 
So we went with that and it is a AC and heat pump unit. So um, this, when I installed my mini split in my last shop, uh, I was under the impression that heat pumps can't really heat when it gets below freezing outside. And the one that I had in my last shop, it pretty much struggled to, to heat that space uh, when it was below freezing outside. These particular units, uh, this one is rated to heat down to five degrees Fahrenheit outside, which in Mississippi, that's, that's plenty acceptable. I think we had maybe three, maybe three nights last year, last winter that got below freezing. So we have very mild winters here. Our summers are brutal, but our, our winters are very mild. So heating down to five degrees Fahrenheit, that's, that's acceptable for my area. If you are further north, uh, Mitsubishi actually also has an inverter system. I don't know what all this means, but I do know that it will heat at maximum efficiency down to negative 13 degrees Fahrenheit. So that was just very interesting to me because I was under the impression that, many, that uh, these heat pump units aren't efficient below freezing. So uh, a little bit of information if you're in the northern states or northern part of the, if you're in a cold climate. <laughs> Uh, so that covers my mini split system. How does it work in here after it's all said and done? The, the worst case scenario for where I live, which we had it last week, is not a cloud in the sky, high 90 degree temperature, and the sun just baking a dark roof. That was, that's the worst case scenario for where I, where I live. And during that scenario, uh, we had it last week as well as, well, throughout the entire summer, um, before the spray foam was installed, I, I used one of these infrared thermometers to take some readings on the interior side of the roof. And the highest I saw this was 125 degrees Fahrenheit, which is, that's pretty darn hot. Uh, that's a lot of surface area to be 125 degrees baking the space inside. So after the spray foam was installed, the highest I saw this uh, since then, is 83 degrees. And that was again on not a cloud in the sky kind of a day, about 2 p.m. on the sunny side of the roof. It's the highest I've seen the temperature. With that said, these mini split systems during that, in that scenario are completely cooling the space just fine. Uh, I have them set on 75 and they stay, not right now, I've got them, as a matter of fact, right now during the video, I've got them set on 70 with the fan speed wide open because I kind of want to see how it sounds on, on the camera. With those going wide open, I want to know if it's really loud. And I haven't recorded anything while, them, while they're going wide open, so that was kind of an experiment today. But just giving myself a little bit of a break to see the audio, hear the audio. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, with these set on 75, it stays about 76, 77 degrees in here. Upstairs, because heat rises, is about three or four degrees hotter. Not a big deal at all. Uh, when I run my air cleaner cart, which is basically all the time when the camera's not running, then the temperature upstairs and downstairs, there isn't much of a change. Um, that's because the air cleaner cart fires air up on a 45 degree angle. So not only does it circulate air around the perimeter of the shop, but it also, due to its position, but it also circulates air top to bottom. So mini splits work really, really well. And part of that is because of the spray foam insulation, which I've already touched, in on, touched on. Spray foam insulation, I went with closed cell and a two inch thick spray. Uh, this stuff was charged, how they charged, they, they priced it at $1.96 a board foot. So basically twice the square footage uh, and then multiply that by $1.96 and that's how much it cost for me to install this, or have it installed rather. So, Prep work for the spray foam. The day before, uh, me and a friend of mine came through here and used some very inexpensive, very, very thin plastic sheeting and covered basically everything but the floor. We went around the perimeter and I just stapled the plastic to the, the header that is uh, on top of the walls holding up the trusses. And then after that was done, I came back with some smaller sections and just draped it over all of the lights and little stuff here and there. It took about a couple hours, no big deal. Um, 
but I think that they were actually going to do that. I didn't discuss this with the contractor at all, but I think they were gonna do that because they came, when they first got here, they started unloading some plastic sheeting and, and uh, they ended up just throwing it all over the floor because I already had everything else uh, covered. That stuff is messy. There is a tremendous amount of overspray and uh, it, it does a good job though. Um, I'm getting a little lost here. Uh, after it was done, I, allow, I allowed the proper amount of time for it to off gas. Then I came back and pulled down all the plastic and then uh, had to sweep and sweep and sweep and sweep and sweep and sweep because there was this stuff everywhere, the little, little balls of, uh, of foam that just stuck to the plastic and then flaked off. Um, but they had the whole setup. They had a couple guys in full suits spraying this stuff. Uh, they got here at 8 a.m. I think they were supposed to be done around noon-ish to go to a second job for the same day, but they did have one gun malfunction. I think that's what they said, uh, upstairs in the loft, so it slowed them down quite a bit. And due to the malfunction, um, they said the spray foam was completed properly. It's, it's all cured and all that stuff, uh, but they weren't get, able to get it to look as good as they wanted in one area of the loft, which I don't, I don't care how it looks, I really don't. Um, that being said, it, it uh, turned out good as far as I can tell, as far as the looks go. Uh, it is a lighter colored, creamy off-white, uh, so a lot of light does get bounced around and reflected. Uh, so it just makes this open space feel even more open. Um, I don't know what else to say about the spray foam. It's it, it just absolutely worth it. It was absolutely worth it. Now I only did two inches of spray foam. I, have, I forget the R value of that. It's closed cell, um, <clears throat> but it does a really good job of keeping the sun at bay. And I don't need to make this thing like, you know, insanely insulated. Um, I, I just want it to be comfortable in here where the mini splits aren't absolutely going crazy, which they're not. So that's that's covered and also if i want to say double up the insulation next year or two four or five whenever um all i'm gonna do is tarp it up again and have them come out and spray it it's a very very painless process uh what else is there oh so the last thing on the list is the doors as the uh, right now when i'm recording this video i still have the original roll-up doors installed but I did have, I did order some, um, I think there are 10 and a half uh, garage doors. So they're going to have tracks just like a typical garage door will. Uh, the tracks will be below the trusses. They're not going to interfere with the lights at all. And those doors are insulated, like I said, but they also have one full panel of, of windows on both doors. Now the windows, are something that I really, really want f for me to be able to see out because right on the other side of the shop is my, my driveway and I want to be able to see when people pull in. Um, so there's that. The windows in those doors are slightly insulated if I'm not mistaken. They're not going to be as efficient as say like the, the actual insulated panels. Uh, but I am going to tint the windows with one-way window tinting, so one-way window film, so you can see out but not see in, and it blocks a lot of the UV rays and all that stuff. I'm going to tint uh, the windows here on the, on the side of the shop as well, just for the, uh, the cut down on the, the UV transfer, the sun coming in. So the doors, they're ordered, they're going to be installed early next week if I'm not mistaken. I uh, still have to finalize that, but that's the last piece of the puzzle as far as anything major going on in the shop. Um, hopefully that answers all your questions. Uh, I know a lot of people are going to ask about the cost of those three things because it's the biggest, like, if the shop is this expensive, that much of it is what's covered in this video. They were really expensive uh, as far as I'm concerned, but also really, really work, worth it. Um, if you run a small business, you know how important it is to invest back into that business so you can um, function properly and it, you know, continue to be in business. So uh, I see this not only as my business, but also what I want to do for the rest of my life, making stuff. And uh, I, I, I invested in it wisely, if, not, if, if I do say so myself, I guess. Um, I'm not going to tell you the cost here on the video because uh, I'd much rather 
get you to click through to my website. I make a lot more money on my website than I do on these YouTube videos. So help me out and check on the uh, article for this video and you can see the cost breakdown. Uh, I think that's it for this particular video. It's kind of a long rambling one and that's, yeah, this is it. I got nothing else to say. You guys take care, have a great day. Uh, project videos coming. Thank you for your patience during all this time. You guys take care, have a great day and I'll talk to you in the next video.